Um, hello everyone. Uh, today is third part of uh, first session, and uh, we already discussed about uh, you know um, NFHS four and NFHS five data on you know exclusive breastfeeding and also on complementary feeding, uh, and we also discussed about uh, growth charts. So. Uh, Today I'm going to talk about a uh, framework that we had created at uh, one of the NGO that um, uh, you know I was working at, uh, and this was the framework for maternal infant young child feeding practices. You know, we had to actually create a protocol, and it took us almost I would say six to seven years to uh, come up with this protocol from our learning in the field. So this is what I'm going to discuss today uh, to understand, uh, like, uh, you know, what what we did and what helped actually. And this is the same NGO which showed, uh, you know, a good amount of reduction of not only wasting and underweight, but also stunting. So, uh, you know, before we again go deep into each uh, uh, factor, uh, just wanted to give you a broad guideline, uh, you know, that what we did. So. Uh, first thing was basically uh, we focused a lot on uh, breastfeeding it took us almost i would say long seven, six seven years to understand uh, what was missing in the breastfeeding aspect because initially in first four five years uh, i was not getting results i mean our children were not gaining as good a weight as uh, uh, you know they were expected to and uh, again you know uh, experience from us as you know we were very strict on growth monitoring so if children didn't grow well we had to immediately take an action you know and here i was i was trying to teach them uh, you know breastfeeding uh, holes and all which i had learned uh, by reading again you know not this training was not done uh, in our medical curriculum uh, not even in M at md level in uh, us and pediatrics so uh, Obviously, looking at all these guidelines, I was teaching them traditional holes, you know, a cradle hold, and I would say, bas pilado, you know, not not focusing so much on intricacies of uh, technicalities. You know? And um, when children were not gaining weight, uh, I was like thinking, what to do? I mean, in the US, uh, you know, immediately mothers start formulas, you know, but uh, here I was working in slums, so I didn't want to think of even starting anything because that was out of question and for me uh, giving exclusive breastfeeding was very very important and uh, you know s uh, somehow we've kind of figured out uh, when we continue seeing such uh, cases you know mo ma most of the cases were not gaining weight actually uh, and then uh, we uh, you know one of the baby in fact kind of i would say taught us uh, and uh, you know we came up with this uh, 45 counseling points you know because of uh, strict monitoring of our data you know and uh, cross cradle actually worked really well so what we did is basically we taught uh, mothers uh, this cross cradle hold uh, you know uh, starting from i would say 2013 or so uh, we started uh, doing cross cradle hold and uh, our goal was just to train this pregnant mothers who came in, you know, because uh, when these mothers actually were not trained on proper breastfeeding technique, you know, when they would go for uh, deliveries uh, any outside, a uh, lot of these doctors would start formulas or, you know, they would say, Dood hai, Dood hai, and they would start uh, all this, you know, cow milk or formulas. So we wanted to kind of empower our uh, pregnant mothers. You know, and uh, that's when we actually um, saw great results. Even when they delivered, you know, even if they were told not to give uh, breast milk because uh, babies were either born by cesarean or some of the other issue, you know, they 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 did not listen to doctors. They they give it. So I think this is a very important point that I would like to discuss is to uh, you know teach your pregnant mothers uh, this 45 points of counseling with cross cradle hold, and you know you'll definitely see timely early initiation of breastfeeding you'll see amazing weight gain you know they don't lose so much weight this that's what i saw that uh, even in us when i was uh, using this whole every time i went you know uh, in urgent care when mothers came we would teach them cross cradle hold uh, you know at day uh, day uh, two or day three post delivery and i was seeing just amazing results of like uh, you know uh, 50 60 grams a day and uh, no wonder you know who table shows 
200 gram weight gain in first week and that's what i saw actually you know uh, which generally we don't see it in india unfortunately uh, you know uh, maybe because of the uh, mothers are not guided or probably i i have i don't want to blame too many things but uh, you know i saw similar results in india in our program when we started teaching cross grid hold so that that's why i was insisting on this kind of uh, 45 points of counseling and uh, what we did is basically here uh, you know this is one of the project in panaskata where all these pregnant mothers were brought in phcs and they were taught uh, you know using our health spoken tutorial which i'll speak in the next uh, uh, you know session uh, and you know they were taught uh, this uh, whole when they were pregnant okay not only when they were pregnant they were asked to demonstrate okay with breast model and the doll and then immediately as as soon as they delivered you know uh, uh, phc medical officers and uh, uh, anm and asha would train them uh, on cross cradle roll and you know basically empower her right so that's what the uh, important aspect and that's what we did in our program also we brought all these pregnant mothers in we not only of course talk about uh, breastfeeding techniques but we also spoke about her nutrition because her nutrition was very important and we tried to kind of get all the mothers from first trimester onward you know because obviously what i noticed is that uh, there was a huge number of uh, you know low birth weight babies being born in uh, urban slums so i wanted to improve their uh, birth weight so we kind of we brought them in early we would have uh, you know one session per month or so even sometime uh, once every two weeks depending upon which trimester they were in and uh, focused a lot on nutrition focused on red flags you know focused on uh, understanding of you know minor aches and pains in uh, pregnancy we did not do a lot of this uh, you know obstetrician uh, kind of care because we didn't have a gynecologist in our program so it was more of a kind of you know other things which were not done in the hospital uh, that we kind of took care of so more of like a nutrition counseling breastfeeding counseling you know uh, talking about issues uh, just general issues uh, teaching them some exercises and you know like a, a paramedical stuff so that was important part of a program uh second part was basically teaching mothers uh, giving them support uh, on cross cradle hold so again you can see this cross cradle hold is completely opposite of uh, what traditional hold is here baby has been held by opposite hand again i'll discuss more in detail later uh and here medical officer in uh, banaskata district uh, you know she's uh, she's doing a home visit and she's teaching mother uh, actually how to hold looking at the latch you know all those important points which she was taught uh, you know in one of the training uh here this is another uh, you know a photograph of uh, breastfeeding latching um again you know what we noticed that in this hold uh, baby could really open a big mouth had a very good uh, extension of neck that extension of neck is really really important uh, you know looking up a little bit like that it was difficult to get that in a traditional hold uh, and you know the way mother uh, was holding the breast was uh, completely different it was u shape rather than a c shape which we already which we always see in the in the program you know and then um, after kind of you know trying this hold on i would say hundreds of babies uh, we again uh, and looking at the data that what helped what did not help uh, our advice i'm talking about you know we eventually came up with uh, 45 points okay now this 45 points included everything starting from uh, mothers uh preparation then the way she sits you know the way she holds the baby the way she brings the baby to the breast you know uh baby's position baby's latch uh, you know mouth latch and other counseling points so it kind of encompasses the whole uh technicality of breastfeeding you know we were always told that breastfeeding is important breastfeeding is important but exactly what to do now if suppose for example if i have nobody to help me okay nobody nobody to teach me then how as a mother uh, i would learn the skill on my own i would call it do it yourself and then basically practice the, uh, you know uh, breastfeeding on your baby you know so this, so that's what that was the reason to come up with this kind of 
uh, concise document you know of course this is really important for uh, healthcare workers doctors and medical officers and nurses to to learn this but you know in case if mothers don't have any uh, support physical support you know just by looking at it and understanding uh, she can definitely try it and i have a lot of mothers who call us on a portion helpline and you know we just pass them uh, this uh, tutorial which we have created on 45 points and they do wonderful they do wonderful we have so many uh, mothers telling us that oh you know just by looking at uh, the skill uh, videos you know uh, i was i understood the problem and the problem is fixed within 20 40 48 hours so uh, this is to just kind of standardize the process you know so that it becomes easy for capacity building you know so here we created this kind of brochures uh, and the wall hangings in different languages, uh, basically all all different languages. So if any uh, you know NGOs working in different areas of India, if they want, uh, if they would want to take it up, you know we have it in all the different languages. Okay, this is created uh, uh, sitara and spoken tutorial basically. Uh, then what we did uh, when mothers came to our program okay uh, it was very important for uh, for healthcare worker to assess breastfeeding now this is breastfeeding assessment tool that uh, of course it it was created by who but we kind of modified it because you know our techniques were different you know uh, we were promoting cross cradle hold so i wanted to add a lot of those points and also also <clears throat> wanted to in uh, kind of add some of this counseling points which were not given in uh, WHO assessment tool so we kind of modified that uh, assessment tool and this is what basically we came up with you know just important points not too much uh, uh, which was not helping mothers to uh, breastfeed or not helping babies to gain weight so we removed some of those points uh, but put in kind of uh, more about you know uh, you know points which were very very relevant you know points which were relevant for example more on latching more on understanding if mother understood whether uh, she uh, you know she knew early hunger cues or she knew that baby need to be fed you know a few times at night all those points that uh, you know we put it in there and what uh, healthcare workers were supposed to do in my program is every time baby came with the mother I'm talking about first two to three weeks when mother is still learning breastfeeding uh, they had to basically check okay so on left side you have all the favorable behaviors and uh, on right side you have unfavorable behavior so unfavorable uh, signs symptoms or whatever you can say okay so if if suppose uh, baby came uh, with the mother you know we we would first weigh the baby I mean that was very important but then we would tell mother you breastfeed and I'm going to examine okay so healthcare ex healthcare workers would examine the mother and the baby and the way they breastfed by looking at it and by filling out these forms we could actually uh, figure out the problem where the problem lied you know because then we immediately knew that okay this is a problem that mother don't know uh, hunger cues then we would discuss more about that hunger cue or a mother did not know how to bring the baby to the breast so we discussed that point but this assessment was very important you know when uh, they came to our program so i definitely recommend to all the uh, all my uh, friends over here to kind of you know i will put a pdf uh, for this form we have again uh, you know recreated added a few more points from learning in past uh, couple of years uh, you know and then just uh, kind of even if you if you're a mother and if you want to just assess your breastfeeding just fill this form form at uh, home and then figure out where the issue is it's all basically like a you know problem oriented uh, solutions uh, you know that uh, uh, you need to know this then the breastfeeding will be very successful okay uh, as I of course said well, why this effective breastfeeding um you know again I keep talking about uh, not just timely early initiation or uh, you know uh, exclusive breastfeeding I keep talking about effective breastfeeding because you know uh, I wanted to see that um, if you if mother knew breastfeeding then why would she start top feed or if if mother knew proper breastfeeding then why would she so much of sand so much of 
uh, stunting underweight under th under six months of age right because babies are only getting mother's milk so like obviously you know once we started learning this new techniques all these questions came to our mind uh, that why every mother need help every mother needs help you know whether it is a mother in a tribal area slum area western world in fact western world mothers need much more help you know uh, and we figured out uh, there was a study uh, which was done in uc davis you know and what they found is basically 92 percent of the new mothers reported at least one breastfeeding concern okay and this is on day three now here are the institute where they have lactation consultant okay they have trained nurses they have lactation consultant uh, they can go to in the hospital but still all these mothers uh, had all these issues and you know by and large uh, in us also they they tend to use traditional hold because you know that's that's been uh, there for you know, for probably generation you know so god knows how many generation uh, but uh, if mother had all these issues so on day three what issues were there 52 percent mothers they felt that they were not feeling well and the cohort was 532 first time mothers so that's a huge cohort okay 52 percent mothers they were not feeling well at breast 40 to 44 percent breastfeeding a person of mothers had breastfeeding pain and 40 percent mothers had perceived lack of uh, uh, sufficient milk so they felt that i was not getting milk okay now obviously when in a uh, in a you know develop world when you have a big institute like uc davis hospital who has trained lactation consultant if those mothers were showing all the symptoms and most of them left actually breastfeeding you know so then there has to be issue right uh, and i did not figure out this issue for first five six years when i was working uh, uh, you know in this ngo but yes uh, you know we did figure that it was the effectiveness of the breast uh, breastfeeding which was the hindrance to mothers continuing breast milk or to uh, improve you know wasting uh, stunting and all those uh, anthropomorphic measures okay so that was important uh, now growth monitoring so growth monitoring was very important part of a program okay so here is the in this ngo what we did is basically we got all this uh, you know small young babies to a program you know and then basically we worked a lot on uh, you know uh, uh, monitoring of these babies you know growth monitoring and so here you know we had social workers who would uh, basically take height and weight or length of these babies then we had and this all lactating mothers so we had a program for lactating mothers also where we would teach mothers her nutrition how to take care of herself and then talk about breastfeeding and complementary feeding and all that you know so it uh, this clinic was not just for young children it was also for pregnant mothers and lactating mothers so all these lactating mothers were bringing the children you know uh, depending upon the weight gain we would decide whether this baby would be seen in two days seven days two weeks one month you know but we had a set protocol you know so uh, this mo this mothers when they would weigh their babies then they would come to uh, you know like a doctor or nurse you know and they would be uh, basically the data would be taken from them you know uh, of course the history would be there we would do breastfeeding assessment imagine we were working in a very small room so we did not have any privacy you know uh, uh, again very uh, contradictory to the place where uh, i had come from you know uh, where we had one huge room for one mother there was so much of privacy you know and unbelievable uh, and here you know when i would tell mothers okay show me breastfeeding and so many times there were fathers there you know there were some other people there it was so difficult you know we had lack of space so this uh, privacy is also kind of uh, important you know in our setting that uh, you know if uh, anybody is coming to any clinic and if you want to assess breastfeeding uh, it's important to have some space for mothers but we did not have it as you can see it from our if uh, from our uh, picture uh, and then uh, what would happen uh, initially we did not have any uh, software so we would do everything by hand we would plot all baby's growth chart you know we would do it, teach mothers what food to eat for themselves and if babies were more than six months old we would tell them what to eat but this was our clinic of uh, monitoring uh, visits you know and uh, our uh, basically the follow-up of these babies 
I mean completely depend on the uh, weight gain okay so if babies are not gaining weight we were seeing them very frequently if babies were gaining weight we would see them once a month okay so that 101 counseling was very very important in our program okay now here this is uh, in that same clinic you know uh, once a mother brought that baby we would basically check the weight you know uh, that weighing scale was also very important you know uh, eventually we ended up buying a uh, seca because seca was very very seca is a german product weighing scale uh, very expensive so obviously initially when i came it was you know they had a salter uh, weighing scale so on a salter you know that uh, every time you put that baby in a salter weighing scale which i had not seen in the us at all you know and uh, i said kept thinking that that baby was you know that weight was going here 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 every time baby moved it would you know and i, I was used to seeing you know uh, one gram incremental weight gain uh, on uh, sophisticated digital machines you know weighing scale and i said i this would not work for me i mean i had to see even 15 gram weight gain and we could not fig obviously figure out on a salter weighing scale whether 15 gram weight gain occurred in one day or two days or whatever you know so then eventually we moved to uh, you know a digital weighing scale but uh, my goal was to get seca products so once we got some more funding we got uh, some better weighing scales okay and uh, uh, this one was uh, basically checking the length so length checking was very very important and uh, what i see uh, you know we are very strict on length uh, how baby's length are checked in us okay because that's again our bread and butter uh, but uh, what i was seeing in our, in our program that all a lot of these healthcare workers you know it was very difficult to train them on uh, length check because you know babies are very uh, wiggly they cry you know they need a lot of this uh, holding of the head holding of the knee you know a lot of time babies would flex their knees you know they would bend their knees so it was it was important for us to do that you know so uh, that's why like what i did and a lot of time what used to happen there used to be a lot of uh, kind of uh, you know uh, length would be wrong you know so when I would plot I said no no this can't be right length because last week it was this length and this time you cannot have uh, increment of three centimeter in one week you know so then I would uh, that we created a protocol that this length would be checked by uh, two different individuals so then what we would do is basically you know we had uh, two uh, social workers so one person would basically check the length and then the other person would uh, you know uh, plot it and then we would have another person doing it you know again checking the length properly again second time you know where, whether there'll be a uh, role reversal you know and uh, we found that you know there was a lot of discrepancies and then again we would have third person doing it so you know that uh, I think finally they learned how to check length so it takes time you know so make sure in your program when you when you uh, when you're doing maternal child health program uh, this length check uh, is very very important you train your team train your staff how to check length okay because if your length is say change by two or three centimeter your child will go from normal to maybe ma'am or even sam or even stunting you know so please that's really really important especially in first uh, you know first few weeks of uh, age you know uh, another thing was basically um, so of course now i spoke about breastfeeding now obviously with that kind of level of uh, training of breastfeeding counseling to mothers a uh, lot of our babies were becoming very tall very big you know some of them were like as i showed you in the picture some of them were like becoming 10 cases by six months of age right uh, but when those babies okay when they are big then they have good appetite okay when they have good appetite they will try everything whatever you give them they will try it okay but when you did not have a good growth in first six months of age those babies were thin those babies were cranky you know those babies are not happy cranky not eating well you know uh, poor uptake of all different kind of foods so uh, i strongly believe that if you want to have a, a, a good complementary feeding uh, state you start your foundation strong okay what is the foundation foundation strong means that you make sure that the baby is breastfed well get that baby to good to, you know 9 10 kgs 8 9 whatever 10 kgs is good i mean i we have shown that results you know in so many babies we can target that because we want our children to be tall and these are breastfed babies so i'm not worried at all about the uh, blood pressure or diabetes i'm not worried at all i don't know why people keep thinking whenever i put some uh, healthy babies photographs who are excluded breastfed that oh 
oh, this baby is overfed, this baby is obese. You guys are not worried when the babies are less than third percentile. 33, 36% children are less than third percentile in India. But you're worried about children who are going more than 97 percentile on weight that to exclusively breastfeed it, you know. So uh, I want to make sure that, you know, you guys understand that if baby is breastfeeding beautifully and if they are gaining weight, there are multiple papers out there that the BMI is uh, much better. You know, these babies who are growing faster on breast milk, uh, the BMI is lower at one year of age compared to babies who are formula fed. Okay, so I don't want formula fed babies or those uh, other babies, you know, uh, cow, cow milk uh, babies to grow fast because those are the mother, those are the babies who is going to develop uh, diabetes and blood pressure. But yes, I want those breastfed babies to have amazing amount of milk transfer. So they grow tall because I showed you and so, uh, so many, I'll be showing more on when I talk about growth charts, I'll show you many more, uh, you know, examples of how these babies grew leaps and bounds just on breast milk, you know. So it's important that, you know, uh, just focus on your first six months a lot. Then your six months ke baad ka complementary feeding becomes much easier. Okay. Okay, so here is your, uh, so this is, you know, Annaprasam from one of the uh, districts, Sabarkata district. And, uh, you know, uh, we had done that project uh, in 2000, late 2018, 2019. And you can see this babies was just so big, you know. So it was a joy for, uh, you know, government uh, people to even feed them, you know, the uh, complimentary feeding because they would immediately take it, you know, and uh, they were just, so they would finish this the whole thing you know big appetite okay and even you know uh, same uh, in the same function basically you can see all these babies are just looking so uh, especially the middle one you know so uh, i think it's important it's important you know before we talk about complementary feeding it's important that our children grow well okay now this complementary feeding also we learned a lot okay uh, believe me that uh, many time many many time actually most of the time i would say when these children were growing well on breastfeeding but at six months what would happen the growth would stagnate okay they would just not grow i mean i would keep telling asking my uh, nutritionist i said why these children are not growing what's happening so we figured out the reason children were not growing because we were again just talking about uh, chawal do khichdi do usme sare sabji dalo ye karo wo karo it was everything the same thing that what what we were taught you know and it was not helping in our program children were not graining weight and when the stagnation started in the weight the length also started stagnating so i was thinking my god we worked so hard on breastfeeding children are like at 97 percentile 85 percentile for length and now children are not growing uh, for weight obviously length is not going to grow right so we had to i mean we had to really come up with something a solution for it you know and uh, what i realized uh, and I'm just fortunate is basically uh, I got, uh, you know, uh, exposure or I would say uh, training of uh, Dr. Michael Golden. Okay. So here in 2011, we had uh, uh, one consensus statement from Indian Economic Pediatrics on uh, management of uh, SAM. You know, guide, we were creating guidelines for pediatricians and we wanted to publish in Indian Pediatrics. And that's when we found that a lot of these children were basically... Uh, and he discussed about, you know, uh, type 2 nutrients, type 1 nutrients, how the SAM children are lacking in type 2 nutrients. And, uh, you know, when so when I was attending those uh, sessions, I realized that, okay, so child had lack of this type 2 nutrients uh, in, and that's why they became SAM. And then when you're giving those uh, type 2 nutrients more in the form of, uh, special food which are given to which are recommended by WHO for SAM children uh, it just kind of stuck to me that why not if we increase those type 2 nutrients in the diet of this uh, six months old children and about complementary foods then you would not have those children going into type uh, type 2 nutrient deficiency right uh, and again I will discuss about this type 1 type 2 nutrient uh, in my other lecture uh, but you know that's when like it just kind of you know it 
uh, rung the bell or I would say, you know, struck the light, <laughs> said maybe let's talk about this type of nutrient when we talk about foods, you know. And obviously he discussed, uh, Professor Michael Golden also discussed about 40 nutrients which are required in the diet, you know. And, uh, you know, a lot of these programs, they, talk, they keep talking about iron, calcium, all that. But uh, none of the programs were discussing so much about the type 2 nutrient, you know. And that's when we came up with these recipes, okay. So these recipes are basically uh, made from locally available uh, beans and seeds and nuts and legumes and you know uh, uh, leaves you know like for example drumstick leaves or uh, curry patta leaves or any of those leaves and obviously you know what happens is like when mothers start uh, food at six months they are so mono like Bruce, the diet was so monotonous they would just give khichdi 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 you know rice dal khichdi roti dipped in milk a uh, little bit of vegetable here and there that was absolutely monotonous no wonder our children were not gaining weight because we were recommending the same thing khichdi do usme sare ye sab vegetables dalo you know vitamin a rich food dalo matlab wo sab matlab nothing it was we were not focusing on protein as much you know and other type 2 nutrients like your magnesium your potassium you know your uh, chloride so many other things we were not uh, focusing at all your you know sulfur so zinc you know and because we had no knowledge we had no knowledge about uh, what food to give which will give all this nutrition you know and the and the food that children were eating was so uh, starch based it was very much starch based carbohydrate based you know and we realized and I really thank uh, Professor Michael Golden for giving me that uh, opportunity to understand the importance of type 2 nutrients. Okay, So we told mothers and I will discuss about this uh, type 2 nutrient dense food, you know, in my uh, complement to feeding. Okay, uh, And then of course, you know, when we understood about this uh, type 2 nutrients and of course important type 1 nutrients also we started creating cooking demos okay so what we would do we would ask all these mothers to and this is uh, and this uh, you know complementary feeding is not just about the dietary diversity but also about the amount how many times babies should be eating you know depending upon the age how to make those foods so everything was very very important you know so again you know uh, it's one thing to tell mothers do this do that you know another thing and a lot of time we were telling that in the beginning but mothers would say, Bacha khata nahi hai, khata nahi hai, you know, uh, uh, Bacha lita hai nahi hai. Then we said, okay, let's start, uh, you know, our cooking demos. So we would bring all these mothers in the clinic. Okay, this is a picture from uh, our other NGO that I've been working since 2013. I've continued to work here. And this is a rural based uh, NGO, Srimati Malti Danuka Trust. And here, you know, uh, here is uh, our team. We have a team of about 12 people. So, uh, you know, this uh, here is a doctor, this is a, a, a nutritionist, you know, she's a healthcare worker, these are social workers. You know, then we have uh, three, four nurses. So, here, like, you know, we have a team of all these doctors, nurses, nutritionists. Uh, social workers they all come come under one roof and help the children to improve their uh, you know uh, uh, anthropometric measurements right that is that was my impact is to improve weight height and all that so um, here we would teach mothers uh, exactly how to make you know from a locally available food which was not very expensive because you know uh, we want to make sure that the children uh, mothers can afford the food that we are recommending we can't recommend something which is very expensive and expect them to buy those things you know we cannot say that okay buy walnut or buy almond or buy this exotic food you know we have to bring all this whatever is available locally so then what we would do is we should we would kind of show them all this uh, ingredient and we would talk about uh, you know nutri nutrient content of each and every uh, uh, you know uh, food and then we would feed the child right in front of the mother okay so that responsive feeding was very very important okay uh, because a lot of time you know mothers didn't know how to feed they would uh, kind of make the child lie down and feed or you know they would force feed the child and all that was very very important part of uh, training of this um, uh, mothers okay so here we created you know from that uh, uh, from this ingredient you know we created uh, uh, 
uh, this tiki you know which were which we were giving to a little bit older child you know so this is about i think about 8 to 9 months old child and he's like uh, enjoying that uh, tiki which has egg which has you know so many different green leafy vegetables and you know uh, ragi it has some ragi and then, then this is dal so we also wanted to show them that dal should be thick you know it should be nutrient dense over here, I saw all these mothers were giving watery dal, literally watery. They feel like they will choke or choke. Hoga. So through cooking demo, we would teach them how to make it and how to feed them. Okay. Junk food is the big problem all over the world. Okay. And that's true even in urban slum, rural areas, tribal areas. You go anywhere, and there's so much of junk food available. And in our program, what we found that a lot of these babies were given, uh, you know, biscuit by uh, uh you know by four months of age mari biscuit and all these biscuits they were getting and uh, i was very much against it so uh, junk food awareness was very integral part of our program okay a uh, home visit was another integral part of our program where we would uh, you know uh, our social workers nurses nutritionists would go to mother's home and then basically see the environment around it because an environment was very important right we may tell them breastfeed karo complementary feeding karo but ghar pe if it's very very dirty if it's very if it's not uh, you know uh, clean then mother, babies would definitely get diarrhea and all that right so those are those are very very important aspect of uh, you know prevention of uh, uh, undernutrition so here you know uh, there is a home visit going on and we are seeing how mother is burping the baby this is one point of her 45 points so here you know she's making the baby sit on her lap okay but we wanted to see how she does it in the home environment and then uh, another thing what we would see is with the and obviously, whenever we would uh, do home visit, we would always have this breastfeeding uh, doll and the uh, baby doll, uh, breastfeeding mo breast model. Uh, and, you know, we would see whether she has uh, prepared those powders or not, whether she's uh, kind of kept it in a clean container, whether she has, uh, you know, whether there is any other issues going on in the house, how clean was the, uh, you know, kitchen, uh, whether, they, how clean was it water, where was she storing? it so there were there was some you know 30 40 uh, things that we were looking at and we were analyzing that how these mothers were doing at home so again that uh, you know very rich data uh, now last but not the least of course i wouldn't call it last um, one more point which is there i'll discuss which is very important but uh, you know again coming from us i was used to electronic medical record okay uh, we were using it for a long time uh, and uh, first four five years of course when i came to india i had to put everything on the paper you know uh, documentation growth charts uh, we had files which uh, uh, similarly how we would have it in us we would have a file for each child and we would not give that file to mother because i was afraid that if i would give that file to mother she would lose it so we would keep it in a clinic you know if every visit uh, we had some so many questions and we would fill out religiously and uh, you know that's how we have learned growth monitoring that's how we have learned what worked what did not work but after four or five years we decided that uh, we need to get software okay because unless you have electronic uh, data monitoring very very difficult to analyze to you know keep taking care of those files sometimes we would lose some of those files or you know sometime there would be uh, the paper was torn child was playing with that file so we had to basically switch to electronic uh, data monitoring so we had this very sophisticated uh, uh, software uh, amazing software you know uh, and I'm so I'm so proud of uh, that NGO FMCH and I really appreciate uh, you know uh, Dottie Wagle who is the CEO of that uh, FMCH she's doing just wonderful work you know she got everything uh, streamlined you know so uh, not only the technical aspect of breastfeeding complementary feeding is important but streamlining the process is also very important you know putting protocols in place getting data coll uh, collection data monitoring you know what works what doesn't work uh, monitoring the program you know evaluation of overall program it's that's what she brought in uh, that was her forte you know uh, coming from us i mean that was completely her forte so she got everything streamlined and i really appreciate so we got this amazing software uh, 
you know and that uh, told us it, it would automatically uh, kind of graph the children on who growth chart so as soon as um, and it was all cloud based so as soon as uh, you know a healthcare worker put in weight and height it would show up on uh, our uh, ipad or our uh, tablet immediately it would show up on my laptop and you know i could show mother look you know whatever we told you you did it and see look at the result she would be so happy to look at those growth charts so i if you want to really kind of do behavior change mother plot your growth chart plot your growth chart because mother looks at a growth chart if she finds out that baby is not gain weight from that growth chart she will do anything whatever you tell her she will do it but mother needs to know how the child is growing okay so don't just go by saying that itna gram badhna chahiye utna gram badhna chahiye yeah of course you tell her ki i'm expecting this much weight gain but then show her see if baby gain 40 grams this is where child is coming now okay so she understands because there's so much of myth in the uh, in the practice out there not only in government sector but even in private pediatricians that you know they are saying ki uh, you know 500 gram mahine ka badhna chahiye that's completely wrong because if you plot that graph and show after one month the child has gained 500 gram mother will say nahi ye to niche ka hai bachcha mother will say you know so i recommend that please plot your graph you tell her what is the expected weight gain and if it's not gaining weight after showing the proper technique then you figure out the problem there is a issue if 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 there's no if it functional issue is taken care of then you figure out the organic cause you know but this is organic cause means we have to find out any medical condition why babies are not gaining weight okay but uh, if we have very poor target weight then those babies are bound to get uh, underweight uh, in just 2 or 3 months matter of 3 months even if babies born 3.3 kg 3 kg those babies become underweight if you have target weight you know just 500 g per per month okay so um again my experience from us that i brought to india uh, was uh, developmental classes because you know uh, over there we have this mom and me class okay where uh, not only uh, kind of young children would go to uh, mom and me class but even pregnant mothers would go to lamas class and so many other different class where you know she would stimulate that baby how we have garbha sanskar right they also have their different ways of stimulating those babies uh, you know in us and uh, i feel that why we are not using that garbha sanskar in our uh, in our uh, ngos and in our uh, government setup so important you know meditation uh, you know uh, talk about uh, you know uh, good things uh, read good books you know uh, say some shlokas if you are hindu say some prayers of if any religion but you know i feel that it's important because it passes on those uh, important uh, you know uh, sanskars in children and i do believe in uh, you know kind of talking to babies when they are in the womb you know uh, so here is uh, one of our setup it's again the same program this was a temple actually you know we did not have such big place as you saw our, our clinic was so small so we did not have this uh, uh, setup so we asked one of the temple in our area if we could use that area to uh, you know to show this uh, developmental aspect uh, of to mothers you know how to play with them how to massage them how to you know uh, stimulate them uh, how to talk to them just everything how to make some toys you know so this all and we would bring children of same age group okay so that you know for example this is uh, mainly about say around 3 months or maybe 4 months old babies then from 6 months to 9 months we would have a different uh, you know program for developmental uh, pediatrics we call it and then for older children we have a different program because each child is at different developmental stage so we would have different uh, kind of uh, you know plays or different uh, advice for different age group so here you know we are the healthcare worker is teaching how to uh, massage the babies okay so again you know uh, again this are for people who are running different programs uh, and also for government uh, you know uh, what are the point of contact for mibyc and counseling so there are so many times that uh, especially you know and this uh, i have a lot of pediatricians also attending this training so i want to show that you have anc time you know you can talk about mibyc and okay uh, anc opds uh, then you have 
you know during uh, the prep room you know the early stage of labor you tell mothers that okay um, or even before she goes into labor during nc time you talk about breast crawl talk about uh, you know breast crawl or into skin during cesarean talk about labor room you know in labor room talk about that okay now baby is going to be born and you know we are going to put the baby uh, on your tummy so that we can start early initiation so this all important contact point you know where uh, not only pediatrician but asha an medical officers everybody can basically focus on those miyc and contact point okay then you have pnc ward absolutely important time period when mother is in the pnc uh, you know a post delivery she is in phc or in hospital for two days in some areas you have only for one day that's fine one day 24 hours is enough you know keep teaching them cross skill hold in 45 points any time mother comes for immunization you know either at phc level or wherever uh, look at breastfeeding do breastfeeding assessment find out if any there is an issue correct it okay unless you correct it mothers will continue doing wrong thing and you will not see good weight gain okay and then any pediatric opd if she if mother came to a pediatric opd or any opd you know for medical officers or any any opd if child came for a runny nose again ask about nutrition why do we only focus on uh, runny nose and cough why are we only focusing on just uh, pneumonia diarrhea ask about why did child get diarrhea why did pneumonia child get because there was a problem with uh, breastfeeding so talk about breastfeeding talk about the technicality skill not just ki breastfeeding karati ho ke nahi karati that is just are you feeding baby are you eating or not i mean uh, yes i would have eaten just one biscuit i say yeah i'm eating no the quality is important okay if you breastfeeding show me how you doing breastfeeding show me because if you don't show her proper skill you you may correct your pneumonia you may correct your diarrhea but she will go back in the community she will come back in two weeks with the same issue okay because you have not tackled the root cause the root cause is poor nutrition causing child to have pneumonia diarrhea any illnesses even runny nose and cough okay so while we are discussing about vaccines and all that please do not forget your basic fundamental of nutri- nutrition and that that's under 6 months is breastfeeding skills and 6 months onward is uh, complementary feeding and continuation of breastfeeding okay so here i'm going to end my uh, you know session uh, i just talked about the framework that we worked under and if we can replicate this framework uh, you know uh, in our government system other ngos other you know uh, organizations you will definitely see results why not right because here we're really actually looking at the problem and solving the problem at the root cause so uh, i hope uh, you enjoyed this session and uh, i'll see you again for the next session thank you